Hi, my name is Lauren with HowStuffInMyCarWorks.com. In today's video, I will explain how the EGR valve works. The EGR valve recirculates some of the exhaust gaps into the air-fuel mixture. By doing so, it dilutes the air-fuel mixture enough so the nitrogen oxide compounds are kept at breathable limits. This is done by allowing a specific amount of inner gas to pass from the exhaust manifold to the intake manifold through the EGR valve. Modern engines are equipped with catalytic converters and fuel injection systems. These keep the nitrogen oxide compounds to a minimum. But even with these newer, more efficient systems, the EGR systems are still necessary to reduce excess emissions. On early carbureted engines without computer controls, the EGR valve was operated through the engine's temperature and venturi vacuum. The EGR valve on engines with fuel injection systems are controlled by the ECM. These vehicles usually have a computer-controlled solenoid in line between the valve and the vacuum source. They also have an EGR sensor that informs the computer what position the EGR valve is in. Some vehicles may have a DPFE sensor, which stands for Differential Pressure Feedback EGR Sensor. There are three common types of EGR valves. They are ported vacuum, back pressure, and electronic EGR valves. The valve I described earlier is the ported EGR valve design. Besides this type, there are basically two back pressure EGR valves. The most common one used is a positive back pressure valve. The other one is a negative back pressure valve. It is important to know the difference between positive and negative back pressure valves. This is because they work differently and they are also tested differently. The positive back pressure valve is most commonly used on domestic models. It uses exhaust pressure to regulate control in a vacuum controlled valve. The stem of the EGR valve is hollow and allows back pressure to enter at the bottom of the diaphragm. When sufficient exhaust back pressure is present, the diaphragm moves up and closes off the control valve. This allows a full vacuum signal to be applied to the upper portion of the EGR diaphragm. This opens up the valves and allows recirculation during heavy loads. Be careful not to incorrectly diagnose these types of EGR valves. This is because back pressure must be present to close the bleed hole. This type of EGR valve cannot be operated with a vacuum pump at idle or with the engine. The valve is acting correctly when it refuses to move or hold vacuum being applied to it. Remember that any changes to the exhaust system pressure will disturb the calibration of the back pressure system. These changes may include aftermarket exhaust systems, headers, and clogged catalytic converters. To distinguish this valve, turn it upside down to note the pattern of the diaphragm plate. Positive back pressure valves have a slightly raised X-shaped rib. Negative back pressure EGR valves are raised considerably higher. On some GM EGR valves, the only way to distinguish between the two is by a letter located by the date code and the part number. N means negative and P means positive. In the negative back pressure EGR valve system, the bleed hole is normally closed when the back pressure drops. The bleed valve opens and reduces the vacuum to the diaphragm. This process cuts the vacuum to the EGR valve. The positive and negative back pressure EGR valves are similar in design, but they operate in opposite ways. The negative back pressure valve is typically used on engines that have less than normal back pressure. These engines can be found on high-performance vehicles with free-flowing mufflers and large-diameter exhaust systems. The electronic EGR valve is commonly used on newer vehicles. This EGR valve is not operated by vacuum at all. An electronic solenoid in the valve is operated by the ECM. Diagnosing this type of EGR valve requires a scan tool. For complete tutorials regarding the EGR valve's operation, replacement, and troubleshooting, visit our website, HowStuffInMyCarWorks.com.